We start with new information on a drive-by shooting that took place near Bagley, Minnesota. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Lisa Bedeau. The shooting happened on Evero Drive shortly before 3.30 yesterday afternoon. And the Clearwater County Sheriff's Office got a call of a drive-by shooting. The people in the home say they heard gunshots and saw a red or maroon colored minivan with a silver or gold colored driver's side sliding rear door driving west. A short time later, the same vehicle came back driving east, firing more shots at the home. No one was hurt in the shooting. Deputies say a small caliber firearm was used. The sheriff says it appears to be an isolated incident at a specific target and says the public is not at risk. If you have any information on the shooting or this suspect vehicle, please call the sheriff's department. That number's on your screen, 218-694-6226. The CEO of the Hebron Brick Company is donating $5 million to MSU Moorhead to help fund the business school scholarships. The donation from Rodney and Carolyn Pasika is the largest in MSUM history. The business college at MSUM will be renamed in their honor as Pasika School of Business. At least 80% of the endowment created by the donation will go towards scholarships for business school students. The rest could go to student or faculty research, faculty positions, and program development or other uses. More than 30 people were hurt this morning when a California commuter train bound for Los Angeles slammed into a truck, causing a fiery derailment. The collision happened about 80 miles northwest of Los Angeles. Several Metrolink train cars flipped on their sides after they struck a utility truck, which burst into flames on impact. Police say the driver of the truck survived the crash and took off, but was later arrested. We're enjoying some sunny skies, but it's a bit deceiving because it's still on the cool side out there. Let's check in with meteorologist Robert Hahn. Although when it's above zero, I feel like I shouldn't be complaining either. Yeah, not too bad, but uh, the uh, temperatures that we saw last evening and uh, very early this morning on the mild side, those have now been replaced with some much colder temperatures. Earlier this morning, very early this morning, we had temperatures well into the 20s and even some low 30s, but now we've got some single digits, teens and 20s across the region, 9 in Roseau and Thief River Falls, 15 Grand Forks, and right here in the Fargo-Moorhead area. Winds out of the north and northwest on the brisk side, 15 to 25 miles per hour, with some occasional stronger gusts, creating wind chills as cold as 2 below here in Fargo-Moorhead. Minus 3 in Grand Forks, 14 below in Thief River Falls, and minus 16 in Bedette. Earlier today, we just saw a quick burst of snow as that cold front made its way on through, but that has since moved well off towards the south. Some snow out in western North Dakota, at least for now, it's going to stay out in western North Dakota. As we take a look at the next couple of days, today, yeah, temperatures will continue to drop on off. Tonight, a cold one, and overnight tonight and early tomorrow, parts of the area will see a touch of light snow. Who has the best chance for that snow? And how much can you expect? We'll let you know coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Robert. Mm -hmm. Congress will be sending the Keystone Pipeline bill to the president's desk today after legislation passed both the House and Senate. President Obama is expected to veto it, which would be the third veto of his presidency. Senator John Hoven says the Obama administration has taken more than enough time to make a fair decision on the benefits of the pipeline and that the legislation is about many things, including jobs, energy, and national security. Recreational marijuana becomes legal in America's wildest state today. Alaska becomes the third state where it's legal to grow, own, and smoke marijuana. But smoking pot in public is still illegal. 53% of Alaska voters favored a ballot measure legalizing pot last November. Adults 21 and older will be able to possess up to one ounce of marijuana and grow up to six plants in their home. Millions of taxpayer dollars could be paid to a Moorhead woman for a mistake North Dakota officials made more than 11 years ago. Back in 2003, state and federal prosecutors indicted Racing Service, Inc. owner Susan Bala on charges of running an illegal gambling operation and not paying taxes. Bala spent 17 months in prison, and the state took all of the money from the business. But the second highest court in the land has announced the state was wrong to close the business and send Bala to prison. Neither North Dakota Attorney General Wayne Stenjum or the U.S. Attorney and now current Lieutenant Governor Drew Wrigley were available for comment on Monday. North Dakota Governor Jack Dalrymple signed a bill into law this morning that provides more than $1 billion to communities in the Bakken oil region. The so-called surge bill will pay for infrastructure projects. The Department of Transportation will get $450 million for state highway projects. $240 million will go to the 10 counties with the highest oil and gas production tax allocations. 
$172 million will fund larger cities in the Bakken, and $112 million will go to non-oil producing counties. Officials in the Northern Valley want to hear what you think about making the drive on Highway 2 a bit smoother. A public input meeting is happening tonight in Grand Forks to discuss improvement strategies along Highway 2, which is Gateway Drive between I-29 and 17th Street. The plan is to relieve congestion at the I-29 interchange, reduce the number of crashes near the airport drive intersection, and improve the commute for people who walk or ride bikes. The meeting is tonight from 6.30 to 8 at the Ramada on North 43rd Street. We now know exactly who will be running in Fargo's special election this spring after filings closed yesterday. It'll be a two-way race for mayor between Tim Mahoney and Brad Wimmer. Six candidates filed city commission seats. Cole Carley, Mara Brust, Scott Wagner, Anthony Gehrig, John Strand, and Bradford Schaefer. Special election is April 28th.